okay? I'm going to start this edition of Monday Night Raw review off a little bit differently. I'm going to read you something that was said last night. Why? Because it's absolutely fucking brilliant. My name is Paul Heyman, and my client, Brock Lesnar, conquered The Undertaker's undefeated streak at WrestleMania, which is why at this moment, my client hereby officially announces his intention to conquer John Cena and take the WWE World Heavyweight Championship at SummerSlam. Now, my client officially acknowledges this divide that permeates through the WWE Universe. There are those who wear green t-shirts and pump up sneakers and they scream with great passion their love and adulation for their hero by saying at the top of their lungs, let's go Cena. And there are those who offer the con contrarian opinion whose mommies don't tuck them into bed at night and they will say with great fever and passion, Cena sucks. Now, it doesn't matter to my client which side of the fence you want to ride on. This malpracticing doctor of thugonomics is in for the beating of a lifetime. I don't just stand out here and spew hype and hyperbole. I exploit historical facts to shove my point down your throat. To wit, I offer you what happened the last time my client Brock Lesnar zeroed in on someone and decided to give them a beating. For years, everybody said, I want to be the one to beat The Undertaker and snap the streak. But that wasn't good enough for Brock Lesnar. At WrestleMania, my client Brock Lesnar gave such a violent beating to The Undertaker that Vince McMahon had to ride in the ambulance to the hospital with The Undertaker because even our heartless chairman was concerned for a dead man's well-being and life. Oh, John Cena, that same beating awaits you. And please, don't confuse my client with some stereotypical villain that comes out here and says, John, you can escape this beating by giving up your title and laying it down at my feet. Brock Lesnar makes you no such offer. John Cena, you can't escape this beating. At SummerSlam, my client Brock Lesnar will take John Cena down. Brock Lesnar will punch John Cena's face in. John Cena, you are going to be hurt by Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar is going to injure John Cena. Brock Lesnar is going to mangle John Cena. And then, and only then, Brock Lesnar is going to F5 John Cena and strip John Cena of the dignity of being the WWE World Heavyweight Champion the same way Brock Lesnar stripped The Undertaker of his dignity and exposed the streak as just being a myth. The same myth that Brock, Les that Brock Lesnar hears every week on television when John Cena is referred to as being the greatest WWE Champion of all time. 15 world titles in 10 years. Now that sounds like something worth conquering. I pledge allegiance to the greatness of the conqueror who stands before me, and to his dominance for which I stand, one sea nation under John, now divisible, with no more hustle, loyalty, or respect for all. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul Heyman, and I'm the one behind the one in 21 and 1. And at SummerSlam, my client Brock Lesnar will beat John Cena and become the WWE Heavyweight Champion of the World. I don't know about you guys. I don't know about you guys. But I legitimately, you can't even see it. You can't see it, but I see it clear as fucking day. I got fucking goosebumps reading that fucking promo from Brock Lesnar. I got goosebumps reading that promo from Brock Lesnar. I want to tell each and every one of you, if you weren't on board with me about being 
uh, a Brock Lesnar guy and a Paul Heyman guy. If you're not on board with Brock Lesnar being the WWE champion, I want you to sincerely tell me in the comment section below how you can listen to this fucking promo and tell me you are not excited about Brock Lesnar being the WWE champion. This does not get you hyped for SummerSlam. This does not get you excited to see John Cena finally taken down. Paul Heyman is absolutely, mind-blowingly, absolutely fucking brilliant. This promo, I I'm gonna say it right now, is probably the best promo I've ever seen by Paul Heyman. And he's got quite a few promos where we can honestly sit there and say those same exact words. They don't even come close to this. Brock Lesnar made his return on Monday Night Raw last night. Brock Lesnar made his return and shook the hands of Triple H. Plan B is in full effect. Or Plan C. I don't know which one, is, which one it is, Plan B or Plan C. I think it's Plan B. Seth Rollins was never in the plans to uh, cash in that Money in the Bank briefcase. Even Triple H told him last night, there's no reason for you to do that. You have a guaranteed shot whenever you want. You pick your spot. When you see fit, Brock Lesnar has always been the real plan B. And at SummerSlam, I'm fucking thrilled to see it finally happen. The Beast himself is going to capture the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. I just had to read that back to you. I, I really did. I honestly did. That promo was sheer fucking brilliance. That got me, that, that made the entire show for me last night. Brock Lesnar, I love seeing Brock Lesnar whenever he's on WWE TV. He doesn't need to say a goddamn fucking word. You seen him standing there and he looks monstrous. He looks like a fucking beast. He don't need to say a goddamn thing. Brock Lesnar comes out with Paul Heyman by his side. Paul Heyman does all the talking for him and he laid it out. He laid it out. If you're a John Cena fan, if you're one of those little fucking puppets in the crowd, I'd be afraid. I would be afraid. Paul, he Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar struck fear into your eyes. And I can't wait. I'm sure you guys can't wait either. If that does not get you excited for SummerSlam, you are not a professional wrestling enthusiast like I am. Brilliant by Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman. Absolutely fucking brilliant. Another thing that was brilliant last night was Triple H trolling the WWE uh, internet marks all last night in that beginning segment. Unbelievable. This is what he said last night. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to tweet my displeasure. That's right, I'm going to jump on social media and I'm going to tweet about it until my fingers bleed. I might even send an Instagram or a Vine. That's right, and in that tweet, in however many characters I get, I'm going to threaten. That's right, if I don't get what I want, I'm going to riot. And if that doesn't work well, then by, then by God, me and my friend Mark, we're going to stop watching. Unbelievable, man. Unfucking believable by Triple H. He pretty much came out and I started laughing my ass off because I knew exactly what he was doing. He knew Battleground was a fucking waste. Justin Labar even said it on Trib Live yesterday. Battleground was one word to sum it up unimportant. It didn't need to happen. It was pretty much a roadblock. To what we're getting now, what we got last night on uh, at, um, at Monday Night Raw, what we're going to be getting for SummerSlam. He said he can guarantee John Cena is not leaving SummerSlam with the WWE Championship. Obviously, at the end of the show, we've seen Brock Lesnar come out and the fucking beautiful picture of Triple H and Brock Lesnar shaking hands was just a sight to behold, man. I'm fucking thrilled. If you can't tell him the sound of my voice and the way I'm fucking acting in front of this camera right now, I'm like a fucking fanboy right now. I can't wait to see Brock Lesnar crowned the new WWE champion. Do you know what Paul Heyman is going to do? Can do you know what do you know the power Paul Heyman possesses right now? Can you imagine if his client is the WWE champion, the programs we're going to get, the matches we're going to get? This is this is a fucking new era for the WWE, man. I was one to say, I, I wish Daniel Bryan was still the WWE Champion. This would be an even better feud with Brock Lesnar, man. But Daniel Bryan's not with us right now. This has been, and I've been stating this, 
the best option for the WWE. Everyone's saying, oh, John Cena is the WWE champion. Fuck this product. Fuck that. Fuck this. Fuck the WWE. Do you see why it was logical for him to win the WWE championship now? Do you see? I want you guys to watch Monday Night Raw last night if you didn't miss it. Or go back and watch the clips on YouTube of these particular segments. What they did last night set it up brilliantly. Okay, and I, I'm on here, I come on here, I'm very critical of the product. I don't kiss ass, I give it to you how it is and how I see it. But last night, the WWE was running on all fucking cylinders. They, they came out, they were all guns blazing. And I commend them for that because they have a plan. Everything that they did with John Cena winning the WWE Championship, yes, it may be predictable, yes, it may have been leaked, but we're getting it now, and it's creating excitement, all because of what Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar did, okay? Everybody's saying Brock Lesnar doesn't deserve this, he doesn't deserve that, but every time he comes back, he disappears and then comes back three or four months down the line, you're excited to see him. So obviously, he's doing something right. Triple H with a great segment last night. Pretty much stated that uh, John Cena is not leaving the WWE uh, SummerSlam pay-per-view with the, with the championship. And uh, you got to believe him because Brock Lesnar is a monster. And the WWE is not going to go back and do illogical booking. Brock Lesnar cannot lose this match. Brock Lesnar will be the WWE champion. And uh, what Triple H says pretty much seals the deal there. Um, Randy Orton came down and said pretty much that he wants his title rematch. He never was granted a title rematch against John Cena. That's not going to happen. Kane came out. They started bickering back and forth. Uh, Kane doesn't want to be the authority's puppet no more. Blah, 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 blah. Roman Reigns came out. We had a, uh, a triple threat match. It is what it is, man. I really didn't watch the match because, um, you know, Roman Reigns is slowly slipping down that ladder uh, in, as far as my opinion goes, but... Now, I'm going to save that for another time. You guys know my displeasure with Roman Reigns right now and the need for him to develop. Um, it's not really, you know, gaining my interest at the moment. So uh, Roman Reigns pretty much is going to be booked to fight Randy Orton at WrestleMania because that's the, that's the only logical thing for Randy Orton to be doing right now at SummerSlam, uh, being that John Cena is going to be uh, fighting Brock Lesnar. But another thing that was sheer brilliance last night was Stephanie McMahon getting arrested. Now, Brie Bella, you know, I've been very critical of her acting skills and the way she portrays herself and just her, you know, her mic skills when she's trying to convey uh, a top storyline or being a top storyline. Uh, example with the whole Kane, Daniel Bryan situation, her acting was god-awful, if you guys remember that. But Brie Bella may not be the greatest performer, but uh, she clearly is getting better, uh, more serious, it's more real. You kind of feel the tension between Brie and Stephanie. Brie Bella bought a ticket to last night's show. She was sitting in the crowd. Her, her sister Nikki Bella comes out and is, is in, pretty much in a handicap match, four against one. I think it was Rosa Mendez, Eva Marie, uh, Alicia Fox, right? And there was one other one. I can't remember who it was right now because I really don't care. But uh, Nikki Bella was booked to uh, you know fight a handicap match. Stephanie McMahon laughing, you know, telling, uh, you know, Brie Bella that Nikki's a failure. You know, you quit, you left your sister alone, you abandoned your sister, you went on to marry a B-plus player. Daniel Bryan failed as a WWE champion. That's the reason why we never heard from him since. He couldn't handle it. All the same shit, Stephanie, just throwing all this trash in Brie Bella's face. But um, Stephanie, you know, kind of egging on Brie Bella from the crowd. Uh, Stephanie kind of orders the security to throw her out, but they can't legitimately throw her out because she bought a ticket to the show. You have a performer egging on a, a crowd member, and you can't do that. So, uh, Bree's uh, calling Stephanie a bitch. Everyone's going crazy. This and that. The whole segment was very well planned. I, I actually stopped what I was doing to see this because my girlfriend... Uh, you know, it said, turn up the volume, turn up the volume, the divas are on. I'm like, I don't give a fuck about these divas in the ring right now. Then I seen Stephanie come down, and then I see Brie Bella in the, in the, in the crowd. And I'm like, all right, this, this got a little bit interesting. So, um, you know, there, there was a little back and forth there. Brie's trying to jump over the barricade to get to Stephanie, uh, this and that. But overall, the whole segment, that one segment there during the divas match was excellent. All right, I didn't know it was going to lead into anything else, but... It's Stephanie who really made this. You know, her mic grab and the slap, 
you know, the spooky fingers that she did, uh, Brie lunging over the barricade, like I said, uh, the way she called Brie a quitter and a loser, and, uh, you know, she was being led from the building by security. It was all perfect. Everything was fucking done brilliantly, and I use that word brilliant a lot in this review because what the WWE did last night with the top storylines getting you ready for SummerSlam is sheer brilliance. They did nothing wrong last night. Nothing. As far as the top storylines go last night on Monday Night Raw, we're heading into SummerSlam and the WWE has got me excited for this pay-per-view after one Monday Night Raw. We got three Monday Night Raws left before SummerSlam. WWE would then pay attention uh, to the details here um, about how to book this storyline going forward through the rest of the night. Brie called the cops. Brie called the cops, which I was surprised about because I didn't think the WWE was going to go there. It's logical booking. What would you do if you're being harassed by an in-ring performer, you know, out of the blue, for no reason whatsoever? Stephanie is in the wrong here. Brie Bella, uh, Brie Bella felt threatened. So what would she do? She called the cops. I would call the cops. You would call the cops. It's logical booking. They arrive at the arena, and... Uh, this was just after Flow Rider. I mean, I didn't watch Flow Rider. I don't give a fuck about Flow Rider. I'm not a fan. I don't like that type of music. But, uh, you know, when the lights came back up after Flow Rider was performing, two policemen were arguing with Stephanie, and it pretty much, you know, became clear what was going on. She was being arrested. She was being read her rights, and she was going to be escorted out of the building. Now, she reminded me a lot of the way uh, Vince McMahon handles these types of situations. She played it perfectly. Her acting was perfect. Perfectly done. Perfectly done. This may have been the, the next best segment behind the Brock Lesnar segment and the Paul Heyman promo. Everything going on here was just by Brie Bella, Stephanie, was just done perfectly. The timing of it was perfectly done. The mannerisms were perfectly done. And, uh, you know, this quickly turns, uh, you know, Stephanie furious, uh, saying that uh, she's going to pay. This is this is my building. I have a lot of pull in this city. You don't know who, you know who you're dealing with. This and that. She goes on this big power trip. Stephanie gets to the back, and we see like a third person video. Triple H finally arrives to uh, you know the back, and he realizes what's going on. He starts making demands to the police, and she briefly believes all will be well, and she won't be taken away uh, because she says, "You see who my husband is." So, obviously, she's trying to play the power card again. Triple H being there, saying that everything's going to be all right. Um, she did what she needed to do. Stephanie was unbelievable at being arrested. And I'll tell you what. Brie Bella versus Stephanie McMahon at SummerSlam has got me excited. This may be the hottest fucking match on the SummerSlam card just because of what happened last night and what, what transpired last night. The real emotion from both Stephanie and Brie, you know, is going to transpire and leak into the ring, and it's going to be absolutely phenomenal. It's going to be, I don't know what happened here, they, they flipped the switch last night. They flipped the switch last night, and everything just seems to be gelling perfectly right now for SummerSlam. I don't want to get my hopes too high, but what WWE did le last night, especially with this arresting angle with Stephanie and Brie, and then Brock Lesnar, you have Triple H coming out in the beginning. They they knew what they were doing last night, and it was I can't I can't complain as a fan. All right, this angle, like I said, uh, made Stephanie versus Brie Bella the hottest match probably right now on SummerSlam, and that's that's just simply amazing to even state. So I'm looking forward to it. Let me know what you guys think about that. Uh, other big topics that happened last night: Paige finally turned heel. It was done again brilliantly. I'm going to use that word again brilliantly. Finally, Paige showed some emotion, and it was the right emotion. She's going to play a perfect heel. AJ got what was coming to her, and that was long overdue. Finally, people can start showing some emotion to Paige. Paige can finally be herself in the ring instead of being something or acting like something that she's not. Finally, Paige turned heel, and it was everything that I had hoped for. I, I was happy to see it happen last night. And AJ is going to play a great baby face against a great heel in Paige. I'm looking forward to that match at SummerSlam as well. It should be probably better than what we've seen at Battleground. Uh, Chris Jericho last night was supposed to do a um, talking segment in the ring. The highlight reel with Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt was uh, 
you know, conveniently in the back with the Wyatt family. They attacked Chris Jericho from behind as he was being interviewed. He just got done interviewed in the back. Uh, they attacked him in the locker room. Apparently, Chris Jericho doesn't have his own locker room. Uh, R-Truth and um, someone else came to, uh, to his aid. And uh, Jericho was Sister Abigail into the lockers, bleeding by uh, his right ear, I believe. So he was taken out of the show. There was supposed to be a highlight reel last night, but that did not happen. Bray Wyatt cut an unbelievable promo himself last night. There was no boring chance last night, I'll tell you that. Uh, Cesaro's no longer a Paul Heyman guy. Uh, we know this for sure because he actually stated last night, hey, I'm no longer a Paul Heyman guy to Triple H. And uh, him and Dean Ambrose had a great match last night. Zack Ryder got a win last night. Um, over Fandango, and he was seen with Layla and Summer Rae on his arms. Uh, Zack Ryder is still a loser, probably his first win, and I can't even remember. Uh, the Miz versus Dolph Ziggler, great match, exactly what we need to see for the IC title. I do think Miz and Ziggler will be feuding down the line. I'm hearing rumblings of Sheamus versus The Miz at SummerSlam for unification of both the IC and the US titles. Uh, we'll see what's going on with that. I would much rather see The Miz versus Dolph Ziggler at SummerSlam and then Ziggler versus Sheamus if they want to go that route. I'm still sticking to my guns about a Rusev-Sheamus feud for the U.S. title. Those two are actually going to be one-on-one -on -one tonight on WWE Main Event on the WWE Network. And uh, pretty much that's it, guys. That, those were all the big happenings last night on Monday Night Raw. Uh, this was probably one of the best editions of Monday Night Raw that you will see in the year 2014. Everything that the WWE did last night propelled itself towards SummerSlam in the perfect way, okay? Hopefully, WWE can keep up this momentum. They got me fucking excited for the top. SummerSlam, I'm telling you right now, looking like a great fucking pay-per-view. You got Lesnar versus Cena, right, for the WWE Championship. You got Brie versus Stephanie. Uh, Randy Orton versus Roman Reigns should be a solid undercard match. Seth Rollins versus Dean Ambrose. You're going to have The Miz defending against either Sheamus or Dolph Ziggler. Uh, th this is looking like a fucking unbelievable pay-per-view, man. We, we're not even getting into the tag team titles yet. We may see yet another classic between the Wyatts and the Usos. They may bring up the Ascension. I don't know what's going on, man, but the WWE right now looking like it's heading in the right direction for SummerSlam. SummerSlam is going to be the best pay-per-view this year. Also got Paige versus AJ Lee for the Divas Championship. Exciting time to be a WWE fan, man. You know, they got three weeks left to SummerSlam, and then we go into the fall. It's going to be unreal. I'm excited for it. Monday Night Raw got my hopes up. I don't want to get my hopes too high because the WWE always tends to bring that right back down. I'm hoping that's not the case right now. But after last night, great edition of Monday Night Raw. Let me know what you guys think. If you missed all my previous videos from the weekend off the script, Chair Shot Reality, down below in the description. Go and check that shit out. I will be back on Friday, as always, with WWE off the script number 23. Until then, guys, take care. This is JD, and I'll talk to you soon.